Okay guys, so we're going to take a close look at the Logitech G920 racing wheel. Let's go! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Logitech G920. So Logitech in general has a lineup of different racing wheels with force feedback capabilities. But it's always a question which one to get. I basically try to buy and review them all and try to help you out with some future guides, how everything works and what is my personal experience. But take into consideration some of these wheels, you have the option to choose the PlayStation and the Xbox Edition. This is the Xbox Edition and the reason I just bought it because I want to play Forza on my Xbox. But in this video, we are going to take a close look at the PC capabilities. It doesn't come with a shifter, that is with the new lineup. The first two generation, I think was the G25 and the G27, came complete with shifter, this one doesn't. Okay, first of all we're going to get some flimsy papers or toilet paper manuals. This one does explain very well like how you need to connect it up, it's more a very convenient and very easy thing to do. So don't be afraid of that. The first thing that we're going to get is here the power supply, 24 volts, especially for the Logitech racing wheel. We're going to get some extra paperwork, hmm, nothing really special, something around this play seat. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Okay, let's get this cardboard out. And let's take a close look at the racing wheel and the pedals. I'm going to say that they always pack these things up the same way. I noticed that already. Oh boy. The pedals are like a freaking beast. They're like super heavy. Okay, so everything has been unboxed. So first, let's take a close look at the racing wheel. Just a quick overview. And a little bit of sniffing because it's brand new. Mm, mm, mm. New stuff always smells so good. I already mentioned like this device is the Xbox edition. But it doesn't have any special influence on the PC gaming part. Okay so let's do a quick overview of the racing wheel. Are there any differences? So first of all we're going to get like with the previous model. This aluminium ring over there. Yep, looks very nice. But an overall quality is like a real nice combination of aluminum, leather and metal. So it's in like a high quality premium racing wheel. So let's take a close look at the controls. What are the differences here? But the feel itself, without the force feedback activated, it feels very nice. It feels way better than the older models I've reviewed. All right, so let's take a close look at the controls. What are we going to get? So let's begin with the D-pad. It's more like the floating D-pad, not super important at the moment. Then we're going to get all the function keys that we're normally going to get with a controller, like the ABXY. And of course, the logo doesn't do anything. And we're going to get the home button, like an Xbox controller. So when you see you have quite a long travel before you're going to hear the click, so the only thing I find quite interesting with this, like the middle part is more metal, but the upper part where the control panel is, is made of plastic. And this model doesn't have an RPM meter. I do like the two shifters made of this brushed aluminium, but then we're going to look at the casing itself. The casing, the logo is different. If you're looking at the G25 and G27, also the same model, it is all like plastic, fantastic, but not in a bad way. Okay, so, the mechanism, they didn't even change this, like after, after all those generations, they still have, still have the same construction when it comes to adding your racing wheel to your table. It works just fine, you can also remove this piece if you want to. So for example, your desk is very thick and you don't need it, you can basically like, remove it. But the downside is you also have to lose those things. But an overall, it's a very nice construction, it's a lot of plastic. The cable management, it's still the same from seriously like the first model like they didn't change anything at all okay so over here we're going to get the two controller ports nowadays with the new models we're going to get a tiny icon that says like which one is for the shifter and another one is for the pedals okay so let's talk about the pedals itself let's put the pedal to the metal because I just wanted to give you an overview and quite interesting is like the model is so far I know exactly the same like the previous ones. The construction is made of plastic and of course metal and when it comes to the tension of the springs and also like the grip everything so far I can see is the same when you're looking at the G29 for example. 
I do like the construction itself. I know there are like a lot of people modding these things. That is of course possible. All the three panels will have a different spring beneath it and it will give you a completely different experience when you want to play the game for the gas clutch and the brake. The bottom part, same story like the previous one, all the same stuff. So if you're having carpet or you just have like a very smooth surface, there are basically different ways you can just place it and of course mount it to your play seat. And another thing I really like is the weight of the pedals. It weighs around 2.7 kilograms and yeah, the convenient thing about it is it will not slide away very easily. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do, we need to go to the Logitech support download page because we didn't get any drivers on the disk. Yep, we're living in a digital world and that is also including for Logitech. And let's see, the thing that we're going to need, and you can see like we're having so many different versions when it comes to software. But for the racing, we're going to need the Logitech gaming software. Yeah, for racing part, but also I'm guessing for keyboard and other peripherals, you're going to have this piece of software. Take consideration, get yourself the latest one, get the 64 or the 22 bit, depending of course what kind of system you're using. It seems to be it also be supported for Windows 7 if you're still using that. And the fun fact, like with Windows 10, I noticed when you're basically plugging in your Logitech racing wheel, it sometimes just recognize your racing wheel and maybe it will work for you. But I have noticed a lot of issues with games I've played like Project Cars that my pedals could not be configured. The thing that you need to do, download it and then install it on your PC so your racing wheel can be configured. Okay, so when it's done downloading, then install it. And it will take a very long time, so I will cut the video over here. But when the product has been finished, it will show up a special window. So in here you can see what kind of racing wheel you're using at the moment. Double check if this box has been checked or not. And this is for basically helping Logitech sending information. I don't want this, so I'm just going to leave it blank. And I recommend you like reboot your PC. And we'll not do it for now for the video, but reboot your PC that will always be recommended. So the drivers will be installed and your same racing wheel will be recognized. Alright, so when booted up, you're going to be introduced by this display. But you can just skip this uh, because we don't need it. And when you're going to skip this, we can just basically get your device configuration screen. It doesn't show anything because it didn't plug it in. But when you plug it in, it will show you your Logitech racing wheel. All right, so with my racing wheel, I got the message that I need a firmware update for my racing wheel. So that's the first thing that you're going to do. And when this is finished, we can reconfigure everything if you want to. So one of the things that you can do, for example, when you go and get into the menu, here you can see like it shows my racing wheel and you can do reconfiguration outside of the game. Another thing which you can do like in project cars, this support of racing wheels is like crazy. And you can see like inside of the game, I can basically map and change everything. So this piece of hardware is almost plug and play, depending of what kind of game you want to play. Project Cars and a couple of other ones are like super supportive when it comes to old and newer racing wheels and it's almost plug and play and if there's something you don't like when it comes to force feedback you can all adjust every single freaking thing. But again if you want to play some different games that I did with my G25, G27 and it isn't supported by the software itself or the game in this case you will have like limitations when it comes to force feedback or it doesn't work at all.
right, so let's take a close look at the Logitech Driving Force Shifter. Is this thing actually worth picking up? I find it a quite weird marketing that they like selling these things separately. I'm guessing people didn't like it in the beginning and they were more like, hey, do you know what? We're just going to sell it separately and give the option to the customer if they want to have a shifter or not. Okay, but then it's the question, is this thing even missing out? I'm just going to be honest. I have been using this thing on my previous Logitech G25 and G27 and I didn't really like it at the beginning. Another reason is of course we don't have the buttons on the shifter anymore. I will show you later on what I mean. And inside a quick instruction where you need to put the shifter. But okay, that is in my opinion just in Captain Obvious because we're only having one freaking port left. But the shifter itself, I am curious. How is the quality built but not even to forget how is the, I say, the, the playability with this? Because I didn't like the first edition, and especially the G25 edition, because it felt quite flimsy. And that was the main reason I didn't really like it. Okay, remove the sticker first. But the Logitech shifter is way slimmer now. And I must say, I really like the looks. It's still very lightweighted, and it feels a little bit plastic, fantastic. If you're looking very closely to the piece of plastic that's on top of the shifter, it looks kind of cheap. Over here, we're going to get the logo from Logitech. It's just a piece of plastic that they put on top of it. It would be more like cool if you're using like in chrome or metal. Okay, so the feel, my first impression, it feels slightly better than the previous models I've reviewed. But I'm referring to the G25 and the G27. Another option they removed from the, I think it was from the G27, that we don't have the shifter, the only going to shift up and down. So the way you need to mount it is exactly the same like the previous model. And it's basically like the plastic fantastic situation that you're going to get with the racing wheel. Some people like it, but some people really hate it. In the future, we'll be more like an extended shifter review where I'm also going to compare all of the shifter of Logitech. In the left over here, we're going to get the G27. It's very similar, but I just wanted to give you like a quick side by side look. Like it is feeling slightly different. And also it sounds completely different. So that makes me wonder like, okay, now we don't have the buttons anymore on the G27 shifter. Personally, I really prefer this, like this new approach that we're going to get all the buttons on the wheel, but that's of course my personal opinion. So if this shifter is something that you need to buy, that is something you need to decide for yourself. I'm just going to be honest, I was quite skeptical because I didn't like the two other models I've reviewed, but this version feels slightly better. So with the previous model, I always had like this handicap that I'm putting it in the wrong freaking gear. But with this new model, I don't have this issue anymore. It feels slightly better. I feel like having a real gear shifter in my hand. Of course, nothing beats a real car shifter, but it's a very big improvement. It's a completely different way to play. And in my opinion, the shifters are really cool, but this gives you like a more and better control of your car. Okay, so the Logitech G20. I'm just going to be honest with you. So I find the differences between all the racing wheels very minor. And when you're looking at all the other models, I will do a side-by-side -side comparison in the future. So consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family. I had a really blast playing with this. You also need to take consideration which model you want if you're going to get yourself a PlayStation or an Xbox, especially if you want to use this thing on a game system. Sadly, so far I know there is no racing wheel that basically supports every single system. That would be so more convenient. But yeah. A nice high quality steering wheel is a lot of fun and in my opinion the next level. Would be great to see you in the next video. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, becoming the Wicked Family. And I will see you in the next video.